Hello and welcome back to my messy bench. Oh, my glove is punctured. Doesn't matter. So I was doing a project of mine and I thought maybe, just maybe, it would be interesting from, for some other people. I am trying to convert this uh, automatic night switch for uh, exterior lights, which runs at 2 and 20 volt, uh, into a 12 volt uh, switch. This is the unassembled one. And this is another disassembled one. Uh, you see here, this is the light sensor, a full bridge rectifier. This one, I, I'm not sure about. It should be, uh, I don't know. I don't know what, it is, what this is. This is an NE555D delay timer, couple resistors, a uh, couple capacitors, a Zener diode. Well, my... Uh, educated guess is that the 220 volt input which comes from this neutral wire and this live wire uh, runs inside this converting circuit which turns it down into 12 volt since this mechanical relay runs at 12 volt itself so my other uh, correct guess, I suppose, is that I can just bypass the conversion circuit and feed 12 volt inside the uh, circuit at the correct spots. So I can bypass the 220 volt input and output and replace it with 12 volt. Um, I'm now going to test this theory. I already connected this uh, module to 220 volt cable and I'm going to plug it in, hence the gloves, always be safe guys, and well let's see what happens, I expect to find uh, 12 volts at this at these spots because uh, the full bridge rectifier here runs to these two spots which in turn power one and and I'm doing this live guys. I I'm studying the circuitry right now while I record the video. So this one doubles one this is no one, which and two zero, both and zero, which goes to resistance and well resistance and so hmm. Hmm. Well, let's test. Okay, plug anything right now. Let's hope nothing explodes. This is not electro boom after all. Okay. This is now going to be live and I isolated the load wire because this will have live if the sensor of the light goes to dark. And here is my multimeter. This is an Aneng ST209 with a, a metric clamp. Set it to continuous current and test my theory. There's um, 0 0.8 volt right now, which is not my case. Let's test other end of the diet spots here 14 volt yeah that is close so if i apply 14 volts or 12 volts at these spots i should be able to wait well, this is the positive yeah this is the positive I am now detaching this from the live, ma live mains and I will solder two wires going to here for plus 12 volts and here for ground and let's see what happens. This is all live guys. 
My homemade flux with uh, pine resin, rosin rather. Let's see how this fares. My TS100 is now ready at 350 degrees. The homemade flux is behaving great, I'd say. My soldering skills not so much. Now, let's solder to the board. So, this one is the positive. Let's shorten it out because it's too long. And I want to mess other spots on the circuit. Okay. One is done. Let's see to the other. Ah. Okay. The other one is done too. Yeah, good enough for me. So, let's set my trusty bench power supply to 12 volts. Let's see what happens. So, ground and positive. And we have a live, uh, we should have a live circuit. Now we just check with the multimeter. Let's see if there is a measurable output. None whatsoever. Nope. No output. Oh, that's a bummer. That's a real bummer. Um, maybe I have to cover the light sensor. Let's check that. So, let's use a piece of insulating tape. Hey, I heard a click. Yes, I did. I did heard a, hear a click. Now, let's see. Well, what do you know? This works now. 12 volts are being fed into the relay. So, I did bypass the full bridge rectifier, feeding 12 volt at these uh, destination points. Now, I know the rectifier is working. Uh, the uh, sorry, the circuit is working, so I just need to make these inputs usable. And uh, I know this is the uh, live wire which I can just short circuit to the positive wire. This is the common wire which I can short circuit to the uh, ground wire, and this live wire I can send to the output. So let's check that theory. Um, let's strip some other pieces of cable.
trick is done. Now I should be able to remove these clips and well, I just realized I am dumb because I could just have used these already prepared cables to do the shortings instead of adding two new ones. Now I can just plug the 12 volt here. Now I have to plug plus 12 volt to the black wire. It's a little counterintuitive if you ask me, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And the negative one to the white wire. And let's see. Um, yeah, I heard the click. So we have live to the output. Now we should be able to, well, we can still use these cables as test points. No, we cannot. This is not for this. Um, I should be able to test, anyway, the output between the negative and the load of the relay and it should be 12 volts. Let's see. Oh, wait, a, wait for it. Yes, 12 volts. Now, if I do remove the masking tape on the light sensor, still 12 volts, uh, should be, yeah, now it is zero volts. Yeah, the timer in action. Uh, it left it open, uh, sorry, closed for a while. And after the NE555D uh, triggered, now it's back to being off because there's light coming from up there. So yeah, I did convert this 220 volt uh, night light switch into a 12 volt night light switch. And there's actually a lot of components that I could save because I can still remove the diodes of the full bridge rectifier to use in other projects if I want to. Obviously now I will have to uh, change these wires with uh, larger ones or rather no I don't no I don't because yeah the small wires will bring what's needed for the relay to work but the load itself will be still carried only by these larger input wires so it's fine like this I just need to remove these ones and the 12 volt light switch is ready yay <laughs> So this is all guys, um, I'm happy if it was usable for you and now you know if you got 220 volt, volt Lionet switches around, you can convert them to 12 volt projects. Have fun!